Out of all the teams that we could have met in the Champions League, I don't think Valencia are too bad. And hey, it means a reunion with Arna Brecky Gretzen. So what's not to like? Hi guys, welcome back to FCOS in Football Manager 2018, almost said 19. I am Ed, Ted Robert FM, and today we've got a cup and league double, which is pretty rare for us these days. If I seem a little quiet, it's because it's actually quite late and extremely echoey in here. And I fell asleep with my son for about an hour and just woke up, so I'm a bit dazed still, so soz. So last time we met was for this Besiktas game. We won 6-1 to secure top spot in the group. We then did the draw afterwards and we drew Valencia, but we'll cover that more probably in a minute or two. Um, but after that we played Ajax in the league, 1-4-1, Buzek, Zuniga with two, Romero on the score sheet, really straightforward. Before we then beat Ajax in the cup, this one actually went to extra time. Uh, we created not a lot really until the extra time period but then Jose Gray and Bahian sealed that. And then the two games leading up to the winter break were a 2-1 win over PSV. That was just quite straightforward. Again, we should be scoring a lot more than we are, and any time we're not scoring about five or six, we're disgracing ourselves, to be honest. And that second game was a one-all draw against Groningen. We threw the kitchen sink at them, but we didn't really make any really good opportunities. A lot of half chances, but that's the way things go sometimes. And then we've had two games in January so far, both from 3-1 wins away from home. Buzek, Romero and Suarez on the score sheet against Utrecht. And then Buzek, Vahean and Marta on the score sheet against Sparta. Marta, Sparta. Which is a bit of a worry to begin with because Hugo Battaglia scored against us uh, to put them one up. He's actually on loan from us. Um, he's doing pretty well this season. 18 appearances, 10 goals. Uh, he's 23 though. I, yeah, he's quite old for one of my signings, but might get money if he carries on performing. So that means after all that, we are playing Groningen in the cup and then Zvol in the league. Uh, Zvol have been pretty good last few seasons, sort of being a top four. Five, top four contender. It's always in with a shout of European football and Groningen historically been a bit of a bogey side. Uh, you can see we drew against them here. So historically we've actually met them a couple of times. So our second season in charge at Os, we beat them 3-1 in the third round of the Becker. Um, so that was the season we got to the semi-final while in the second division and then we met them a couple of seasons later in the second round and also won. But then the Eredivisie, what's that, five losses in a row? Then one win, three draws, another win, another draw. So yeah, I'd be pretty happy saying they're a bogey team at this point still. Just need more wins. But as we're in January, that means the transfer window is open. There's still a few irons in the fire, but nothing too major as it stands. But we have done a few things which might seem a bit odd on the surface. So Mario Reyes, the Mexican defensive mid, has gone on loan to Cologne. Um, he's guaranteed rotation, at least football, and they've got state-of-the-art facilities. So... That's a lot more than we can offer. This one might cause a bit more concern. Vitra Hack, our right winger, sort of our backup right winger really, has gone out on loan to Hoffenheim. Again, they've got better training facilities than us and he has apparently, well, apparently he's going to get more regular football. Um, I think he actually might be down for rotation, but again, that's similar to what we're offering, but with better facilities and a better league, you think he'd progress a bit more? Uh, that does leave us a little short on the wings, but... I can't remember if I figured it out to be honest, I haven't touched this, this save about a week. We'll find out in a second. One more loan of note out. These all fee paying loans by the way is Jackson Gonzalez, centre back Colombian. Uh, he's performed okay for us when he's played but again rotation at Lazio, better league, better facilities, similar playing time so it's a good move for him. A couple of generic loans out and then we've actually already let Joe Sadler go for 400k to Celta. Uh, we brought him in for free from Man City. But all he did was moan and he came off the bench a bit. He got eight appearances off the bench in half a season. But I don't know, I just, I don't trust him after he, he moaned really early. So he's gone. Another note about like Reyes and Gonzalez, for example, is that uh, they aren't actually registered for the Champions League because we didn't have that many spaces. So we're not losing those players for that competition, although we are for a hack. So again, concern. And having just looked at the ins, there's nothing really there of note, to be honest. Um, two youngsters, so nothing. Nothing at all. Finances obviously looking fantastic. We're close to £88 million, so probably we should be reaching the £100 million by the end of the season. Obviously, the new stadium is being well, it's, it's done. Uh, we're in it at the moment. Train facilities, still got no idea. Can't request them. Uh, last time I tried anyway. So I assume they're just happening somewhere and they're not going to 
get delayed forever but i suppose we'll see anyway the team for today i'm trusting previous ed who set this up but the team does look a lot lighter you can see we don't have too many reserves now we've got helio cesar in goal we've got manuel munoz bogossi and suzini at the back Ronaldo and prazak in the middle Graham Romero on the wings and then Buzek and Suarez up front so what's going on at the moment Burnett is out for another th uh, three weeks or so with an injury and then Zuniga is also out for four weeks which is a bit of a killer so that means he'll probably miss or will he miss uh, he might catch the second leg of the Valencia game but he's definitely out for the first leg so we're trusting Suarez and Martha to make up for him in his absence but that's not likely so we're into the game there's no one at least starting for Groningen that is a familiar name to me or maybe anyone at this point so um won't hang around too much so goal kick Groningen smash it long because he gets his head on it it's just it's bouncing around isn't it some of the quality in the last <laughs> couple of games have been really bad to watch um I, I've probably mentioned a million times I've just started my Newcastle series and the players there are generally a better caliber on both sides it's just nicer to watch to be completely honest um so i'm enjoying that one but suarez knocks it forward for buzek who does get sort of brought down but it drops to suarez who puts into the back of the net with one nil up in the cup that rhymed wow awesome uh, i think this is either technically quarter final or semi-final it's the quarter final that's ridiculous the fourth round is the quarter final <laughs> I love it so much. Throw in for Groningen down our right side. We're not really getting close enough to them, but Prazak starts deep and then clears it. It looks like there's a good break on now. Gray hits it for Buzek. He's probably going to have to do it alone because Suarez is nowhere to be seen and unfortunately puts it just wide. Goal kick, which Groningen hit long, which is just, this is the pattern. They hit it long. One of our massive defenders gets their head to it and Gray down the right side. Crosses low and hard, and Prazak puts away for two. Uh, it's hopefully going to be a route. I might only rejoin you now for goals because I've got to get through this. I got to get through this. So we are three nil up. Uh, just as the halftime whistle is about to go, Romero on the left side gives it to Suarez. Finds Buzek running through a bit of an angle, but just hammers it home in the near post, aided by the fact that the goalkeeper goes down before the shot even comes in, <laughs> which is insane. Be a half time, three 0 to the good, and surely through to the semi final. So two minutes of injury time with signal, which is almost up. It's been pretty highlight light, <laughs> if that really makes any sense, in a strange way. We've not really seen anything aside for... There's been one attempt on goal from outside the box, which was never really going in. Apart from that, well, you've seen all the highlights. We've changed... We've made some substitutions, but, like, that's it. It's been a pretty boring game, pretty straightforward. But I'm happy enough to be going through to the quarterfinal. I would like to obviously retain the Eredivisie and the Cup if I can. If we could get Champions League in there as well, that'd be a ridiculous season, as unlikely as that'd be. But, got a dream, right? Right, because of all the excitement of getting through to the semi-final, I completely forgot we actually have the draw. So in the semi-final, we've got Excelsior, Sparta and Vitesse. So obviously Vitesse being the strongest team out of that. Sparta aren't absolute mugs. But Excelsior, we actually met last season, um, which was strange because we, yeah, we don't see Juppa League teams very often at this stage. So let's have a look. FC Os play Sparta. So <laughs> like I mentioned earlier... They've got Hugo Batalia, who is on loan from us. But that's about it in terms of familiar faces. Um, they're seventh in the Eredivisie, so they're kind of middle of the road. We should really be getting through to the final against them. But now, on to Zvol. Right, we are back for the game against Zvol. It's literally the same lineup. So, Cesar and Goal, Manuel, Minos, Bokossi and Suzini at the back. Ronaldo, Prazak in the middle. Graham Romero on the wings. Buzek and Suarez up front. My thinking is that uh, we've been on a good run. And I don't really want to rotate the team too much. And I think it's time to start looking ahead to Valencia a little bit. So if we've got the um, the strongest team out now, and then again, probably against Az, and they get... Uh, oh, I've not really thought this through, have I? Actually, this makes perfect sense in my head. We play his ball with our strongest side. We rotate against Az, strongest against Utrecht. And then we rotate again against Groningen, and then we're strong for Valencia. So some nice rotation going on there. Gives them 10 days off before the big game as well. As much as we say rotate, but the squad, like I said before, isn't that big now. So there'll be rotation in most positions, but a couple of guys will just have to soldier on, to be honest. So we get into the game, and as pretty much always, 
there's no one we recognise. Goal kick, Julio Cesar on it, sprays it wide early to our left back, Suzini. Some nice build up play, which is just, yeah, it's, it's real pleasant, <laughs> but I guess uh, our team really is that much better now. Um, as Gray one, run, runs, runs down the right wing. What what was that? Was that a header on goal? Was it a clearance? I don't really know. The angle is very strange. Um, but last season, even the season before the season we won the title, the title for the first time, we did have weak links and lack of backup. And we still have a bit of a lack of backup in a couple of positions. But the players we do have now are just that class above. When I was wishing back Olate, and I still do in defensive mid, but you compare that to Ronaldo, it's just absolutely no contest. Ronaldo is like potentially a world class player. So we are dominating teams as league now, he says, as we go 1-0 down. Good on me. Free kick, Gray is on it. Huge deflection. Keeper can't quite get back to it. And we find ourselves back in the game, I suppose, uh, drawing only four minutes later. So yeah, just hits the wall. Keeper's already gone and unfortunately can't quite keep it out. So unfortunately, I'm loving it. Highlight, Buzek inside the box. It started very early and very high up, so hopefully... We can get something for... I don't know what's going on, but I think Buzek's offside there. That was all very quick, very frantic. Oh, not enjoying it. Throw in on the right, Manuel on it to Jose Gray, who tries to spread it wide, but it's just lazy and horrible. But fortunately, we pick it back up. Suzini out wide to Romero. Again, some laziness there. So Suzini, I haven't extended his line. I'm thinking about it, but I might leave that up to the next manager to figure out a left back. But... um. I just noticed how small he is. He's like five foot one or five foot two. Look at him up there. You can't see him now, obviously. But yeah, tiny. Jose Gray can't extend his loan because Arsenal want to give him a first team opportunity next season as he hits the bar from across. And then the last one of note, as Gray puts us two one up, bless him, is Manuel at right back uh, from Manchester United. He has been extended for another season. I think we're paying something like nine grand. A a week for him. I think it's like 30% of his wages and that's about it. So yeah, real good going. Uh, has, is that, that would have been an amazing goal if that went in. So 2-1 up at half time thanks to two goals from Jose Gray. I'm still going to say I'm far from pleased. Um, who doesn't like it? Julio Cesar and Lucas at Buzek don't like it. Well, you know what? I'm not in the mood for this today. Julio Cesar can come off for Piccolo. And Marta can come on for Buzek. Uh, I don't know if I ever mentioned this. Piccolo I signed just on a free uh, goalkeeper. Good sort of backup rotation. 22 years old Italian. Was at Ajax. Who I think were trying to extend his um, contract. But just didn't manage it. But he just seems pretty good as an all-round backup. Pretty solid. Okay, that explains a lot. I think Ajax had him on trial. And I nabbed him. That's why it's showing up that he was at Ajax this season. When it isn't showing up here. So he's from Melbourne Victory. Uh, I assume then, yeah, he's Italian and Australian. Which is pretty cool. And obviously you know all about Michael Marta. Uh, not getting anywhere near as much game time as he deserves. He's he's a hero, that man. But um, he's just not as good as the rest of them anymore. Highlight comes in, Bolkosian spreads it wide to Ramiro, Prazak in the middle, just pulling the strings as he always does, uh, finds Manuel wide who finds Gray, we've seen this a hundred times before, back stick to Ramiro drops down for Suarez and he pokes home, which used to be the, the martyr role really, but um, happy happy times, we're 3-1 up and as it stands, at least it was as we went into half time, yeah, Utrecht are beating here and Veen, so here and Veen are 12 points behind as things stand with 21 games played so it's looking pretty good for a third title win on the bounce and a fourth title win in the Eredivisie out of 10 seasons in the whole of the OS series, which I think is pretty good. If you had have told me that in the early days, maybe after like three seasons in, like the start of the fourth season, that we'd win four Eredivisies before the end of the series, I would have... I would have laughed in your face. I considered ending it. But Marta crosses it. Suarez, Prezak, you can have a go. No, we're, then why are we building from there? Just just shoot, shoot. Someone, oh, nearly. But overall, I'd say it's a pretty good return. I think we could have done better. We'll make the final change now as well, just to carry on talking. Uh, who do I want to bring on? Uh, let's bring on, should we bring on a youngster? Yeah, why not? We'll bring on Van der Geest for Suarez, just because why not? Van der Geest is just an academy product. He's not that good. But yeah, four top division title wins and hopefully two domestic cups. I'm a bit 
upset about the Becker because I was kind of hoping we'd be on a par with the Erdovizies. If we had like four and four and gave Europe a good go, then fine. As Marta scores a superb goal, so I lost the concentration completely. That is special. Uh, that's really special. I love him so much. Yeah, if we um, if we get to the final of the Champions League, then I'd say we've given it a good go in 10 seasons. I think that's pretty respectable. Uh, not sure how to judge it against some other FM players online, uh, but I know like Fox in the Box, for example, with his Casapir streaming series, Twitch series this year, it's taken him 20 or 21 seasons to win the Champions League. Uh, but he has been getting to the latter stages for like since like season six or seven, which obviously we weren't doing. But mm, I'd say we're in a slightly harder league to do it, and only slightly. As Marta puts this five one up, by the way, I should be saying that. Uh, Van der Geest down the left side draws in the defence, low cross, and there's there's the Marta sort of position, like I mentioned earlier, just ghosting in the front post and prodding home. So there it is, a 5-1 win over Zvol. I didn't quite see what it does to the league, but I'm happy with that. Turn not to be complacent. I hate being told not to be complacent. It's ridiculous. But there it is, Hirnveen drew 3 all with Utrecht. So they are 11 points behind us, which could have been better, but equally is a pretty good record. We got a goal difference of 53 from 21 matches. It's pretty pretty remarkable stuff. Uh, surely the league is on its way back to Oss yet again. And obviously, the next time I see you, oh, that is split up a lot more than I thought it was. Is that normal for it to be split up that much? Champions League first knockout round leg one, late February, and then mid-March. There's probably going to be two different episodes. That's kind of annoying. Uh, I might throw in a league one with that, but you'll see. The next one will be Valencia in any case. And obviously, I'll update you on any transfers that go on between now and tomorrow in game it's extremely unlikely but you never know but if you've enjoyed that please do like and subscribe leave a comment let me know how i'm doing all that kind of stuff get involved but thank you very much for watching